Why don't you have better balance when you're doing all the things to practice the balance? So say you're going to a yoga class, you're regularly practicing tree pose, even doing your half moon pose, or you're standing on one leg while you're brushing your teeth and then doing the same thing while you're making supper. All those things are great, but there's a reason why. You don't have better balance and your risk for falling and therefore of fractures. Whether you do or you don't have lower bone density, a fall could result in a fracture for any one of us, depending on the circumstances. I'm Deborah Agatson. I'm the founder of Flipping 50. I've been working with women in midlife and older for over 39 years and 10 years through Flipping 50 with only women in menopause. This comes up a lot and here's why. What we need to make sure that we're doing is think about the instances and situations when a person would fall. When we're falling, we are usually, we're climbing down steps in a basketball arena. The lights are a little funky. You've got your coat in one arm. Maybe you've got a drink and popcorn in another. You're stepping over other people's knees in a very limited space and somebody calls your name from behind and you turn around. I mean, literally those are the things that make us stumble and fall. So we need a couple of things there. In that instance, how would standing still in a very cool, calm and quiet room, not moving, help the balance that you need at that moment? And that is exactly the scenario. We're training in a very static way with limited distractions all too often instead of really focusing on reaction skills and on distraction. So sometimes it's actually better to go. If you go to a gym, go to the middle of your gym or <laughs> while the football game is on and you have kids and family members coming in and out of the living room, stand in the middle of the living room and practice your balance poses right there. But better yet, when you go, say, to a yoga class, the best balance practice is not actually standing statically in that tree pose. It's getting into and out of the tree. It is getting into and out of a prayer balance pose or a half moon pose. While you're in transition, what we're doing is your center of gravity is really right about here, right? You're right at your core, kind of your belly, probably your belly button and a little bit lower, a little bit higher, depending on the length of your torso and your legs. But when we move that from instead of over the base of support of our feet, where we feel very stable, when we move it say in a half moon pose, when we're actually lying out horizontally, balanced on one leg, like a stork, now we've really displaced ourselves, but it's not even in the getting there and the holding that still, it is in the moving in and out of that pose. Now we hope that you don't ever get put in that scenario, but inevitably you're gonna step on a little water and hydroplane, maybe because you don't have much traction on your shoe. You may step on a little bit of ice and have to catch yourself. Something slippery on the floor doesn't have to be water. All of those cases mean we need reaction skills. So some of those agility types of skills, reaction if you're playing pickleball, tennis, racquetball, those kind of skills where you have to react and respond to someone else is a better way to practice your balance. So let me demonstrate. What I want to show you here is the example of uh, playing catch. So if you have a partner, this is super great. So you're going to stand with your feet as if you're on a balance beam. You're going to play catch with your partner. Now you can use a weighted ball. We happen to have a 10 pound weighted medicine ball. It doesn't even need to be that. You could be using your stability ball, your resist ball for the one that you sit on or lie on for strength training exercises and pass that back and forth. Different sizes, different weights, all of it will change the game. And practice throwing back and forth, but both of you standing with your feet as if you're on the same balance beam, one foot in front of the other, as opposed to stable with a base of support, we've made your base of support smaller, it'll be more challenging. <clears throat> then what I want you to do is to move your legs. So if I didn't tell you which foot to put forward, you will put your dominant foot, you'll put yourself so that your dominant foot is supporting your weight. Just 
switch them up and you will notice there's a difference and there's a reason your body just did that for you naturally. Now, it's not always what you think. So if you are a dominant right-sided, you actually may put your left leg forward because you're used to, say, kicking through with your right leg. Your dominant leg would be the kicking leg. Most likely, it's not true for everybody. Just because you're right-handed doesn't always mean that you're dominant on your right side. It can be the case, but there may be reasons why growing up you had an injury. It's all different. But regardless, whatever, if nobody tells you, put one foot forward in front of the other, you'll just do whatever you want, what's, what's the best for you. So switch them. Okay? Don't always do what's easy. Because when you're caught and you're falling off balance, most likely you will have your non-dominant leg will be challenged. You won't have as good a reaction skills. So train that one. So it's kind of up to speed just a little bit more. So you can play catch with different size balls. So if we use a really small ball, like a racquetball, it happens not to be a racquetball. It's just for exercise sake. But that's going to go much faster. The reaction skills have to be much better. If we got further away or closer together, this distance we're apart right now is actually one of the most challenging. The further we get apart, the longer we're going to have to eyeball that ball coming to us. The closer we are together, you know, we can see it. We're practically handing it to each other. So pace yourself there, switch legs, use different size balls. But here's the real kicker. Don't be nice to your partner. So after a period of time when you're warmed up and you start getting better, what you want to do is think about throwing to the upper right shoulder or right up here for your partner or then right over here or right down on the outside of their knee and the outside of their hip. And so you're never going to throw it like right here, right? So like you're playing catch with somebody and you want to do it nicely right into their glove, that's not this game. So once you're better at doing this, standing on that balance beam, now you stand on the balance beam, but you challenge each other to maintain the balance and not step off that beam by throwing the ball outside. So the center of gravity has to move when you're doing that. There is the challenge, right? And nobody gets hurt. You just step off. Don't fall, okay? And that's one way to improve balance. So in reaction skills, but you're challenging dynamically. That's with a partner. So it makes it super fun. The next exercise that I'm going to show you is you can take your hands, you put yours together like this, lengthen your arms out, stand in that balance beam stance again in a lunge. So you're going to bend your knees so you're a little bit more stable. If somebody came up and pushed you, you'd have some stability there. And then I want you to take your hands out. Don't lean forward. So I just want you to be upright. Take your arms out. So it is a long lever away from you. Your partner is going to do the same. And as you say, okay, one, two, three three, you both push. So the backs of your hands, you're pressing on each other and then you can very gently say, okay, push, push, push. What you're doing is activating your core, but there is a little balance. And then you can decide subconsciously, you can begin to push harder or you can release it and push harder and you can suddenly release it a little bit. And your partner will have to adjust because they've leveraged to stand against that and then you let go and they have to move again. So again, nobody gets hurt. You're on solid ground. You're not actually on a balance beam. Keep that in mind so that everybody can step off when they need to. But then be sure if you've done the back of your right hand to the back of theirs, switch sides, do the other one as well, and switch your legs too on both stabilization through the hands. So that changes things. You're working core and almost every time you are working your balance, you are working your core. No partner, no problem. On some other videos here, I've shown warm up options. Dynamic warm up is another way to engage your core. So those dynamic warm ups are actually displacing that center of gravity and helping you to also work on balance. Part of the reason we do that at the beginning is to increase your coordination, your agility, your reaction skills, and kind of get you to focus on the workout, not be distracted and thinking about the groceries and the errands that you have to do afterward, but really right here in the moment. 
And that's a much more valuable thing to be doing as a part of your warm up than to simply do static stretches. We don't want we want to save that kind of thing until the end of the workout. But you can do those all by yourself. So standing up but moving one leg. So not just standing on one leg. You can slip these kinds of exercises between heavy sets. And instead of standing or definitely instead of scrolling through your phone, you are making really great use of your time. So you are not only getting the rest before you come back to using heavy weights for the same muscle group that you might be using, but you're making use of that active time and making every minute of your workout count. So I might do a chest press a bent over row and rather than go right back to the chest press again I'll do a I'll do a standing balance exercise a dynamic balance of some kind so then I've got the chest press the bent over row a balance exercise and then I'll go again for my second set might be the same balance exercise or I might do a different one this time and then for the third time and I'll repeat that so now I've got some great balance woven right in. It's not like additional time. It's not something I have to think about doing at home. You can, of course, you can throw that in and think about when you are incorporating your yoga. Remember that the benefit of the yoga is not just get into the pose and hold that static pose. It's as you come into the pose, that is your dynamic balance. And that is the beauty of actually really focusing on working on reaction skills, reacting to the change in your center of gravity over a different, smaller base of support. And that is what will save you from falls and make you feel much more stable and solid. And there is muscle endurance, not as much muscle strength when it's simply our body weight, but there's muscle endurance going on there. And it's a great wake up for other strength exercises that you will be doing, as well as for your yoga. You will benefit in so many ways. I'd love to know if you have questions down below. And if you've been incorporating these things, you may realize now, oh, I do have that built in already. I haven't thought of that as being my balance exercise, but potentially it's already there. You know, and when we amplify our thinking about something that we're doing as consciously saying to ourselves, this is beneficial, not only for my core or not only for relaxation, if it's yoga, but it's actually helping my balance and agility and preventing my risk for falling. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions, please let me know. If you have some other ideas, remember that you can go here and I'll link to that in a comment right down here below. There are a, There's a warm up video with some ideas that are, these are great for dynamic balance as well. And there is a static, don't do this between exercises <laughs> and don't sit still, don't scroll through your phone, actually make use of that time video that also demonstrates some very similar things and they all really are dynamic balance balance. So when you get overwhelmed thinking all of this is going to take so much time, it really doesn't. When you plan really well your warm up to your cool down and what it is that you're doing each day of the week, it is very easy to weave it in and you have layers of you're knocking this out and this out and this out all on the same day. Super doable. All right, what are you waiting for? It's time to work on your balance. I'll see you on the flip side.